Hello and welcome to the Rugged Rockhound. Today I've got a little bit of a treat for you. We've got another unboxing video to do. And this time it's from some subscribers who said that these are rocks their children collected when they went on a hike. And they said they went to an old mine where there were old mine tailings. And it was mostly what the kids collected. So it's a little different. We're gonna see what the kids got. And this will be a kind of a fun opportunity to kind of tell them what it is and, and maybe where it came from. So let's get into it. So let's take a look at that. So we have here definitely some green, which is some copper ores. This right here looks like some iron replacement minerals. And then this would be the host rock, which looks like mostly a sandstone, which is kind of unusual. You don't usually get a lot of metal deposits in sandstones. It's interesting. <laughs> Here, a nice little stream pebble. That looks like it might have a fossil right on the end of it. Yeah, can't make out what it is. I mean, there's always the possibility that it's a shell or a coral. But yeah, it looks like a limestone rock that's been tumbled in a river and probably some kind of fossil right there. Oh, here we've got, looks like it broke, but this looks like some gypsum or selenite. When gypsum is in crystal form, you call it selenite. Yeah, that looks like selenite to me. Okay, this will be another copper rock from the same mine, because as you can see, it's kind of that sandstone. And it's more of a sandstone to almost a conglomerate based on the size of the rocks that are in the sand. So you can see the little sand grains, but you got some bigger pebbles. So. Yeah, cool though. There's a lot of copper in that one. You can see it. So this type of ore of copper is what we call malachite. And there's probably also a little bit of chrysocolla in there, but mostly it looks like malachite. Ah, now that is some classic granite. Look at that. A nice pink feldspar. Quite a few uh, black biotite crystals in it. And then you've got this band here. Now that band could be part of a small pegmatite vein. That happens. From what I can see, it looks like it is mostly quartz, I would say, which is very common. Normally if you get some kind of a vein in granite, especially if it's a pegmatite related, it'll usually be quartz and you can see the light coming through it. This looks like another nice little stream pebble. And based on how dark it is and things like that, I would say that's probably volcanic rock. Oh, now this is neat. I'm gonna spread off a little bit more. This is neat. Okay, this one's my favorite so far. <laughs> So this one right here is crystals of fluorite, if you can see those in there. Nice cubes of fluorite. And you also got some blades of barite. So wherever this came from, whatever mine this came from, it has fluorite and barite in it. And that might even be some galena right there. That is really cool. That is a cool piece. I like that one. Look at those fluorite cubes all in there. Well, you guys found a good one. I like this one a lot. Well done. Here's a fun little rock they found. It's got some nice layers in it. This is, it looks like a silt stone. Basically, it's like silt that you get lakes and rivers. Pretty cool. This looks like quartz right here. another nice little rock they had looks volcanic it's got a lot of air bubbles in it kind of like a pumice yeah I'd say that's pretty much a pumice this looks like a nice big chunk of feldspar so this is some pink feldspar and so it might be related to that granite piece they had we got a nice little agate right here you can see the sunlight in it 
That's pretty nice, huh? It's got kind of a nice orange to it. Well, it's kind of like that borderline agate slash chalcedony because there's not really much banding in it. It's really pretty though. That's kind of a fun little rock right there. Kind of like a little wonderstone almost. But it, you know, it forms very similarly. It's probably volcanic or like a siltstone. And then you got layers in it based on how the water deposited metals and things in it. Oh, here we go. We got some shell fossils here. All right, looking at that one, I'm pretty sure that's what you call bivalve because it has two humps to it. Also called a brachiopod. But the generic term is just bivalve. But yes, cool shell fossils. Got some little stray things in there too. That looks like some calcite. Cool. It looks like some more calcite. With a little bit of other stuff going in. Well, yeah, that's calcite. We have what looks to be mostly quartz. Kind of a darker colored quartz. And this is kind of a nice green volcanic rock. And it looks like we're going to end with some more copper ores. Nice. So once again, we've got this lovely malachite. This one has a lot of malachite on it. Really cool. Definitely came from a mine. An old mine. And then this, you can see, has a little bit of blue on it. Hopefully you can see that. It's just a tiny bit of blue, which is the copper ore called azurite. So after closer inspection on this one, the black is actually, it looks like coal actually. So there might be a little layer of coal, which is strange to have it right up against a sandstone. So carbon of some kind, maybe it was an old tree or something that got trapped. So that would be my guess, but it looks like coal when you look at it closely. And the way it's breaking off, yeah, that's definitely cool. And there's that unboxing. That was some neat stuff. Thank you guys. My favorite by far was that rock with the fluorite on it and barite and some galena. That was really cool. It probably came from an old lead mine, I assume, or probably other metals. Most mines don't actually dig the fluorite. Fluorite's usually the byproduct, but fluorite is awesome. So yeah, they're probably going for the lead or other metals. Really cool rock. I really like that one. So thank you for se uh, sending that and sharing it. And I hope all of you enjoyed it. Until next time, remember, there is treasure everywhere.